Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare a bank reconciliation statement. So this topic is kind of near and dear to my heart because when I was in Form 4, Form 5, I had no clue how to do this topic. The terminology confused me. I had no idea what to add or subtract. And then when you think you learn it one way, all of a sudden, it's the entire opposite way and you have no idea why. So I managed to get through Form 4 and Form 5 without knowing how to do it. And then I went to Form 6, and thankfully, I didn't see a single bank record in Form 6. Get to UE now, and in my first semester of my first year, we had a foundation course, and it was Intro to Financial Accounting. And of course, there was one section with bank reconciliation statements, so I was kind of hesitant and reluctant about doing it. And then I started to do the topic, and I started to read the textbook, and look at the examples, and all of a sudden, things made sense. So it just goes to show that even if one textbook doesn't explain it that well, or if one teacher doesn't explain it that well, there's always another teacher or another textbook that may have a better explanation. So please, even if something is giving you trouble, don't give up on it. Search for the information. There's this thing called Google, this thing called well, YouTube, which you should be on now, and it has a wealth of information that's there for you for free, okay? All right, so I'm gonna take my time and go through this topic with you guys. And most likely I'm going to break it up into multiple videos so I don't overcrowd any single video with too much information. Now that being said, let's get into the topic. All right guys, so let's take a look at these two items on the screen. So on the top of the screen, we have the cash book. I mean, it says bank column only. Now we know the cash book records is the book of original entry that records both the cash and bank transactions. We're going to ignore cash transactions for now, and whenever we're speaking about the cash book, we're going to assume only bank transactions. So our bank account, so our cash book is our record of our bank account, the inflows and the outflows. The inflows are called receipts, and receipts go on the debit side. Why? Because bank is an asset, and to record increases in assets, you have to debit the assets account. Similarly, on the credit side, you're going to see all the payments. When we make a payment, our money in our bank account would decrease. Therefore, to record a decrease in an asset, you're going to have to credit the asset account. So we have an opening balance, we have a closing balance, we have a few receipts, we have a few payments, and, oh, sorry, this was a payment as well, okay. And we have our balance. Now our balance is gonna be brought down on the debit side, that's 14,000. So assets usually have brought down debit balances. Now I'm saying usually because the bank account is, uh, is an account that can have an exception from time to time. We'll get to that either later in this video or in the next video. Anyhow, so our cash book is our record of our bank account and the movements in same, okay? Below that, you're gonna see the bank statement. So the first thing you're gonna notice is that this is not a T account. This type of account is called a running balance account. What does that mean? It means that the balance is calculated at the end of every transaction instead of at the end of an entire period. I mean, you will see a balance at the end of a period, but as you're seeing here, we have a column for balance and that column is updated every time there's a transaction. The next thing you're seeing is that we have a debit column and a credit column, but something isn't matching up here. But let's just backtrack a little bit. So what is a bank statement? Let's start there. I should have started there. <laughs> what is a bank statement? Now, our money, our bank, the asset of bank, is money kept at a bank, at a commercial bank. So I don't know, I mean, you guys from different countries are watching my videos. I don't know the names of banks in every single country. In Trinidad, we have Scotia Bank. We have, what else? First Citizens. We have Republic. We have RBC. We have a few others as well. So any business, any person who has a bank account, their money is kept at the bank physically. Now, we're not gonna get into the whole banking system where the bank actually keeps most of its money at the central bank. That's a little too on the economic side. We're not going there right now. All we are concerned with is whatever the, the asset that says bank in any company's balance sheet, statement of financial position, that money is not kept on the premises of the company itself. It's kept at the premises of the bank, the commercial bank. So our cash book is our record of our bank account. The bank statement is the bank's record of our bank account. So they're both recording information about the same item. Now our bank account is our asset. That's our money at the bank. But from the bank's perspective, is that an asset for them? Is it their money? No, it's not. 
Now, despite that fact, they still use that money to make loans. But once again, as a bit more on the economics and finance side, we're sticking with accounts for now, right? If you're more interested, you could Google that. Coming back on point, the bank statement is the bank's record of our money at their premises. From their perspective, it is a liability. And what are your double entry rules for liabilities? Credit to increase the liability and debit to decrease the liability. So once again, let me repeat that. The bank statement is the bank's record, bank record of our money at their premises and the movements in our money, increases and decreases. Now, let me tie that in with what I was saying about a running balance account earlier. So the balance at the start is 15,000. The first transaction is a credit for 2,000. So credits will increase the balance. And let's, let's double check, 15,000 plus 2,000 gives us what? 17, okay? The next transaction is a debit for 2,500. So debits will decrease the bank balance in the bank statement. 17 minus 2,5 is 14,5. The next transaction is a credit. Credits will increase the balance in the bank statement. 14,5 and 1 is 15,005. The next transaction is a debit. That's going to cause a decrease. And 15,5 minus 1,800 is 13,7. And so on and sundry. So we have the setting of the stage there. Now, we're going to backtrack a little bit and just remind ourselves that the cash book is our record of our money at the bank. The bank statement is the bank's record of our money at the bank. So both of these things, cash book and bank statement, are recording information about the same object or item, our money at the bank. So the information should be the same, the balances should be the same. Let's take a look, let's take a look. So let's start with the opening balance. So we have opening balance up here, 15,000, and that's matching with the opening balance down here. Uh, what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to grey it out so we know what we've checked already. So that way we don't, we're not trying to memorize everything and keep, keep track of everything mentally, right? Uh, you know what? Let's jump to the ending balance immediately. So we have a closing balance here of 14,000, but look at that. The closing balance in the bank statement is not 14,000. It's 8,900. It is different. That's a shortfall of, what is that? What, 5,100? You know what? I'm going to highlight, highlight that, but I'm going to highlight that in yellow. So we have a situation where the balance in the cash book does not match the balance in the bank statement. So your question should be why? Well, the answer is actually right on your screen. The cash book records our movements and information regarding our asset of bank as does the bank statement. If the information in both items was the same, they'd have the same ending balance, assuming they had the same starting balance. Now they have the same starting balance, but clearly because they don't have the same ending balance, the information between both of these items is not the same. That's something called asymmetrical information, or some people say information asymmetry. Now, how do we therefore make sense of this? What, first of all, what do we have to do? One, we have to be able to explain why the balance in the cash book and the balance in the bank statement do not match. And that is the purpose of the bank reconciliation statement. There are two steps, by the way, but ultimately the bank reconciliation statement, the purpose of it is to explain why the balance in the cash book differs from the balance in the bank statement. Okay, so we talked about the information in both places being different, despite the fact that, we, that both of these items, cash book and bank statement, are reporting on the same item, our bank account. So what we have to do is we have to inspect them to see, okay, well, what information is different? You guys know, like, when you were maybe a bit younger, maybe you still do it. There are these little activity books, or even in the newspapers or whatever, where you have these two seemingly identical pictures, and it says, spot the difference. That's all bank reconciliation statements is. Spot the difference. That's really, that's at the heart of it. Okay, it's not all that it is, Ted, but that's at the heart of it. So what we need to do to find out why these two balances differ is we need to look at the information between both of these items. Let's start with the debit column, or the debit side, rather, of the cash book and the corresponding credit side in the bank statement. Why are we looking at debits and credits? Well, the debit column in one item and the credit in the other because 
Once again, the cash book is our record of our bank account. It's an asset, so debits increase the asset. The credit column in the bank statement is incre records increases because the bank statement is the bank's record of all money with them, which is from their perspective a liability, and credits increase liabilities. So let's go through. So I'm seeing three items, sorry, three items here, and I'm also seeing three items here, but they, uh, they don't look the same. Two of them, this 2000 and this 2000 from Tomato Sauce looks the same. Whoops, no, 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 not yellow. Whoops, my bad. Right, gray. Gray, that way when we gray it all, we know we don't have to worry about those things, right? Um, the you know nothing also is grayed out, which means the winter is coming and the direct deposit dividend received. Those things, actually, you know what? Let's put those in different colors, and I'll tell you why just now. So we're going to put this one up here in green, and we're going to put this one down here in blue. Right. I'll tell you why a bit later. Now, so we have one item in each statement that is not present in the other. So those are the asymmetrical items. Let's check out the payments columns now. So in the cash book, sorry, I think I, I, I scroll up a little bit there. Right. In the cash book, the credit side records the payments because once again, the cash book is our record of, our, of the movements in our bank account. It's an asset. So... If it decreases, which payments will do to it, you have to record that payment, that decrease on the credit side. Similarly, in the case of the bank statement, remember the bank statement is the bank's record of all money with them, which is from their perspective a liability. And how do you record decreases in liabilities? With debits. So these two columns are being compared. So I'm seeing four checks here. I'm seeing four items, but some some are matching up. These three items, these three checks, these first three checks here, they are matching up very well. But this check 34 for the transport of 1700, that is not in the, ca in the bank statement, sorry. And the standing order for insurance and the bank charges, those are also not matching up in the cash book. So the blue items and the green items are the asymmetrical items. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to kind of create a situation where the information is symmetrical. So to do that, the first thing we do is we update the bank, the cash book, right? We can't update the bank statement. We don't control the bank statement, the bank does, but we control the cash book. So let's go there. So I'm gonna split my screen. I'm going to scroll up a little bit like that so things look a little clearer. Oops, I don't like that. Okay, cool. And what I'm going to do, so you guys are seeing some extra words here. So those, this is the actual hand that I use in my class. So you're getting privileged information. <laughs> All right. Anyhow, so to update the cash book. Now, over the years, kids have come and I've seen different ways, different teachers teach this topic. And that's great. There's no one right way to teach this topic or to do a bank reconciliation statement. So with the updating of the cash book, how I teach it is I start with the balance in the cash book right, before the updating, right? So 14,000. Now some teachers tell students you have to write over the whole cash book. I suppose it depends on the question, but I wouldn't go so far to say as you have to do that. I don't, I don't think you do, okay? But once again, it's my opinion. So what we're gonna do now is actually, I'm going to, I'm gonna scroll down because we need the bank statement to get the information that is missing from the cash books. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit because I kind of want to pull this down like that. All right, so we have three items highlighted in blue here that are present in the bank statement, but that are missing from the cash book. So what we need to do is put them in the cash book. This first item here in the credit column in the bank statement is an increase. So that's gonna go on the debit side of the cash book, the updated cash book. So we have div right, direct deposit of dividend received 1,000. Now, we have two items in the debit column in the bank statement that, are, that were not present in the cash book. So debit items in the bank statement are decreases. They will therefore go on the credit side of the cash book, the updated cash book, I should say. And now all we have to do is balance off. So uh, the debit total is going to be greater than the credit total. So we need to make it equal. And when we balance it off, that's going to give us the 13,000. So that's the updated cash book balance. Now, if we look at it, it still is not equal to the bank statement balance. So what do we need to do now? 
Well, we just updated the cache book by putting into it information that was not initially present. So shouldn't we do that with the bank statement as well? Well, yes and no. Knowing that we don't control the bank statement, we don't prepare the bank statement, the bank does. So what we do is we prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Now the bank reconciliation statement is not a financial statement like your income statement or your balance sheet. It is not made for publication, not made for public use, it is strictly for internal use. It is part of our control system, just like trial balances and control accounts. So this is part of, of the accounting process, right? the control system. And all it is, it is basically our equivalent of updating the bank um, statement balance. Now, there are two ways um, that, that I'm going to show you guys how to do this. The first way is, in my opinion, the easier way. We start with the bank statement balance, the 8900. And then, just like how we updated the cash book, we do the same thing for the bank statement. We put in the items that are in the cash book that were initially missing from the bank statement. Let's take a look. So we have one debit item here, which is an increase, and we put that. Now, it doesn't matter if you put the increases first or you put the decreases first. Once you add and subtract the correct things, you're fine. Uh, we have the transport item is 1700. That's missing from there, and that's, a, that's on the credit side, so we have to subtract it. Uh, let's see what happens now. So we get a 13,000 too. So now, what I'm gonna, let, me, let me get rid of this split. And we're going to, oh, 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 what's going on there? Stop it, stop it, go back down, right. So what we are going to notice is that these two balances, sorry, I want, oh, no, 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 stop it. Right, <laughs> right, let me try that again. Okay, technical difficulties, my apologies. What we are going to notice for the third time is that these balances now agree. The balance in the updated cash book and the balance in the bank rec agree. And that is the point of a bank reconciliation statement to show that we know why the balance in the cash book and the balance in the bank statement don't agree. Now, I was mentioning something a bit earlier when I was starting the bank rec about um, there being different ways to do this. A lot of times teachers start off by showing you all how to do a bank rec with the updated cash flow balance. Once again, I'm not here to criticize anybody's process. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense to do that because you, to me, it's easy to, do, to start with the bank statement balance. And once again, this is not a financial statement governed by um, international financial reporting standards, uh, nor is it illegal to start with the bank statement balance. Now, that being said, I am still going to show you how to start with the cash book balance because some CSEC questions ask for it that way. And some questions come with the information like that. Okay? Um, and I mean, it's better to know how to do it right and not have to than to have to do it and not know how to right you just have more tools in your arsenal okay but once again um i know like, my explanations are never perfect a lot of you all say that they are great and that you guys understand better i'm very humbled by that and i'm grateful that i could bring this across to you like that and that you actually understand but i know some of you all still don't if you have questions please leave them in the comments I'm happy to answer them once I have time. And I, I try to answer all my comments a little bit each day. Okay, guys. So we're going to take a quick pause there while I shuffle around some stuff on the screen. And we're going to try another question. Okay. Okay, ladies and gents. We're going to take a look at a second bank reconciliation question just to practice what we did just now. Now, if you feel like it, what you can do is you could pause the video, you can try the question, and then let it play to see if you were correct. And once again, please don't be afraid to make mistakes. That's a perfectly normal part of the learning process. If you are doing work and you are not making any mistakes, you are not challenging yourself enough. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you need to make mistakes in every question. No, <laughs> when you understand something and you're good at it, be grateful you are good at it. But remember how many mistakes it took to get it in the first place. All right. I make mistakes all the time and my students pull me up on it. And even in my own private practice and reading and, and, and calculations and stuff, I make mistakes, but that's part of it, okay? And yo, I'm talking too much, let's get to the work. So first step in doing bank recs, if they, if they give you information like this, because they can give you a different setup for the question, which I'll get to later on, we compare the cash book and the bank statement, the information in both of these things. First things first, opening balances, balances at start. Yes, okay, so we're gonna gray those out. Um, balance at N, 3,500, 14,000, okay. 
Those definitely differ. So we need to figure out why, why does the bank statement say we have $14,000 uh, available, but the cash book says $3,500. What's going on there? Okay, so now we compare the inflows in the cash book with the inflows in the bank statement. I have two inflows in the cash book. I have two inflows in the bank statement. But I'm seeing there's only one in common, which is the 4000 from DBOSS. Uh, we have a direct transfer here. I'm going to put that in blue. And uh, this one from Be Good. I'm going to put that one in green. Right? So we color coding things. Right? Now, of course, you guys don't have the advantage of doing that in an exam. I suggest you use your, your, your pen or your pencil and you put little letters instead. All right? For what goes in the bank rec, what goes in the updated cash book, that kind of stuff. Now, let's compare the payments column. So we have three payments here, three checks. I'm only seeing one check in common. So that means we have two checks on top here that do not appear in the bank statement. And we have two items down here in the debit column that do not appear in the cash book. Okay. So next step, let's update the cash book. So what does that mean? It means going in the cash book and putting in the information that is not there, but is found in the bank statement. So we're using the bank statement to update the cash book. Okay, so we're gonna let's let's shift. Oops, sorry. Shift this up a little bit, and we're gonna scroll down. Okay, right. So first thing we're gonna start with is the balance in the cash book. Right. So thirty-five hundred. Cool. Uh, next, let's go down to the bank statement, and we're gonna pull the information, the stuff in the blue. All right. So we have one inflow as a 9,000. So we're going to put that in here as well. And then we have two outflows, two debit items, which are decreases, standing order and bank charge. Now, by the way, I'm going to explain all of this terminology later on. I know some of you guys are probably wondering, but so what about unpresented checks and bank documents? I'm getting into it. I should have actually mentioned that earlier. I'm sorry about that. But I was just kind of eager to get back into making videos. It's been about four months since I've made a video, so I'm a little rusty. So I do beg your pardon. Once again, we have those two items, standing charges and standing order and bank charges. Okay, so it looks like the, the debit side is still going to be greater than the credit side total wise. So our balance will still be carried down from this side and of course brought down here, right? So balance brought down 7,000. Okay, now that still doesn't agree with the 14,000 up here. So what we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to go to the bank rec and we're going to need to do a bank rec. So we're going to start with the 14,000 balance as per bank statement and now we're going to go up to the cash book and we're going to add any increases that are highlighted in green, debit side items, and we're going to subtract any decreases in green on the credit side. Okay, so um, I'm seeing one increase, the B good thing. So we could add check. Now, by the way, once again, I know that you guys are probably wondering what about the proper terminology that'll come. If for whatever reason, after the video, you still can't wrap your mind around the terminology, just put the items as they call them, okay? But hopefully you'll be able to use the terminology by the time you finish the video, okay? <laughs> All right, and we have two items on the credit side, the rent and the wages. So let's put those in as well. Uh, right. So when we do our arithmetic, we are going to get 7,000. Let, let, now let's get ready to split any screen. Aha! Uh -huh. Sorry, it kind of jumped up automatically there. So the balance there and the balance here seem to agree. No, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. What? All right. Of course, when I'm trying to do stuff, <laughs> that's when it's... Um, right, that's what I wanted. I wanted to highlight them in the kind of the mango color. All right. <laughs> okay, so we've just done a second bank reconciliation statement. Once again, the process was more or less the same. We're going to do a third one now, and we're going to talk about bank overdrafts. Yes, we're taking a look here at another example. This is example two, and this time we're talking about bank overdrafts. So just in case you don't remember what an overdraft is, actually, let me show, let me show you some notes, right? So a bank, where's my cursor? All right, so a bank overdraft, right? So dealing with overdrafts. All right, so if you want, you could pause and write down all the paragraphs, but you don't have to, honestly, right? So an overdraft is a facility offered by a commercial bank. What does that mean? What is a facility? Remember, a bank is a business. 
And why do people start business? To make money, to make profit. How does the bank make profit? Because profit is revenue minus expenses. How do you make revenue? Well, you either sell goods or provide services. The bank offers services. What is one of the major services? They make loans. Basically, they sell money, yeah? because when they make loans and people have to pay them back, they pay back with interest. The interest is basically the price of the loan. So you are actually paying to borrow money. So it's like, it's like you are buying money. <clears throat> Sorry, I need some water. Anyhow, so before we go off on a whole tangent there, a bank overdraft allows you to spend more money than you have in your account. Why would you want to do this? Because maybe you don't have enough, but there's something you need to buy or an opportunity you may need to take advantage of. And the bank is all too happy to lend you money to do so because it means they're going to make money off of your head. Okay? Now, I'm not criticizing the banking system. Okay? It's a very important part of our financial system. Cool. Now, <laughs> let's get to the, um, the, 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 the stuff. <laughs> all right. Now, the implication is with a bank overdraft, if you spend more money than you have, you're going to end up with a negative bank balance. If you have 8,000 in your bank account and you, you are allowed to spend more than that and you spend 10, 8 minus 10 is minus 2. So I know some of you are probably grumbling, oh, go to the director numbers. Relax yourself. We're not going on a whole, a whole math path. I love maths. I would love to teach maths, right? I, I do, right? But not right now, okay? But relax, relax. It's okay. So if we take a look at this cash book, we have a regular starting balance and immediately we're going to compare that to the, to the bank statement balance and see that they're the same. What we will then see is that we have this thing here, bal C, the balance carry down and an O slash D. What do you think O slash D stands for? Overdraft. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, now if we look here, we're seeing a negative 4,500. Now, we're going to highlight both of those items in yellow. Reason being that, um, well, those are the things that don't agree. Now, you'll notice that the balance is carried down from the debit side, which means, sorry, right, uh, it's going to be brought down. Ah, I forgot the typo. Right, on this side, on the credit side. Now, remember earlier I said assets usually have debit balances, right? And I said the bank is an ex can be an exception, right? So whenever you have a brought down balance, oh, sorry, and I should say balance brought down, my apologies, all right? So balance brought down on the, on the credit side, how can the bank account have a credit balance? When it's an overdraft, if you spend more than you have, it means your credit side is gonna be greater than your debit side, which means the balance will be brought down on the debit, on the credit side, sorry. <laughs> That implies it's a liability. So yes, your, your bank account is now a liability account, okay? And similarly, so you're seeing some, some balances down here with brackets. Brackets are how I indicate negativity. Some people use a minus sign, that's perfectly fine. Some people, instead of using the, the regular roundish brackets, they use the kind of, the ones on the keyboard like a, like a greater than, less than sign. However you choose to do it, that's fine by me, okay? The process, by the way, in terms of the bank reconciliation statement, does not change. The only difference is the balance is now negative. That's it. So, follow me on this. Let's compare the debit items, the increases, to the credit items here. Now, we have one item in common, coffee, whatever the check is from coffee for, all right? So, tea and cake, um, that one didn't show up on the bank statement and the direct deposits didn't show up on the cash book. So we're going to highlight those two in that, those colors. Now payments, I'm seeing check 67, all right, um, is common between both items, but these three checks did not make it onto the bank statement. By the way, those are probably unpresented checks. I'll explain that a bit later. And these two items did not make it onto the cash book. So, we now have our information that we can use to update the cash books. Let's scroll up a little bit. Let's split that screen. Let's pull this, uh, come on, Philip. Uh, right, okay. Yeah, so we're gonna go down and we're gonna go in our updated cash book section here. So, first item, um, first of all, <laughs> the balance is brought down on this side. Right, because it's an overdraft. 
and overdrafts are liabilities, and liabilities have credit balances at start. Uh, right, which matches up here. <laughs> so I apologize for any confusion because I had a debit item, right? <laughs> so we go in the bank statement now, and the blue items are the items we put into the updated cash book. So direct deposits, that's a credit item there, which means it's an increase. So we're going to put that here. On the debit side, because account assets increase with debits. And these two payments here will go on the credit side. Now, when we are totaling up, we will notice that, of course, the credit total is greater than the debit total, which means that the balance is still in overdraft. So we're going to have balance brought down, O slash D, 13,000. Right, okay, so it still doesn't agree with the overdraft of 4,500 as per the bank statement. So what do we need to do? We need to do a bank reconciliation statement. All right, so I guess you all will see some notes on the, on the bottom there. So first things first, let's put in the balance as per the bank statement, 4,500, a negative figure because it is an overdraft. And we're going to go up here and we're going to put, so let's say we have one increase. Uh, did I put the increases first, boy? Yeah, I did. So T and K. And then I have three decreases. Now, you could actually add up all those decreases and put them as one line item. Right, um, 12, 2, and that's for 16, 5. So you could have put one line item for 16, 5, or you could put them separately, whatever floats your boat. And now we have a 13,000. Oh, let's get rid of this split. Uh, yeah. Right, so what we are noticing, sorry about that, we are noticing is that the balances between both of those items are now the same. They are both. Right? Uh, they are both overdrafts. Okay, cool. All right, so ladies and gents, what we're going to go into now is where we have to do a bank reconciliation statement and, of course, an updated cash book. But we're not going to have the statement, sorry, the cash book and the bank statement to come here. We're just going to have these terms, these, these words, and from those words, we're going to have to, well, words and numbers, we're going to have to make, well, a Okay, so here is the dreaded no cash book or, and no bank statement question. That's the words only. So as you can see, it's, it's headed up. Where's my cursor? Where does it go? Where's the most? All right, okay. Questions using closing balances and terminology only. And sometimes you're lucky to get both closing balances. Sometimes you only get one, which is the cash book. All right. So in many questions, you will not be given the entirety, both the entirety of the cash book and the bank statement with which to work. You will instead be giving the ending balances for each item and a list of items. Use these pieces of information using, sorry, you will be required to update the cash book and construct a bank rec. So let's take a look at example three. So I'm going to hold it there so you guys can take a look. You can take a screenshot, whatever the case is. You can write it down, up to you. But I'm going to go through this stuff now, right? So it says here, Ethan B. Mary, or Ethan Mary, right, has a closing bank balance of 6,000 in his cash book. So this is cash book, all right? Um, let's put our one in, let's put our one in green. All right, but his bank statement shows a balance at the end of 9,000. Actually, I'll put them in yellow because um, those are the things we have to compare, right? Those are the ending balances that don't match. Right, sorry, yeah. <laughs> I forgot. There's yellow I use for those. My bad. So 6,000 in the cash and 9,000 in the bank statement. So we can see already things don't agree. But look at the information, direct deposits to bank account, standing order for insurance payment. I think we may have seen standing order a bit earlier. We definitely saw direct credits to bank account, bank charges, we saw that for sure. And now unpresented checks, bank lodgements, and undeposited checks. So what are these things and what are we going to do with them? So for the sake of simplicity, these first four items are bank uh, items that would be in the bank statement, right? Remember above, I would have highlighted the stuff in blue, right? So those things are blue items. Let's put those in blue. So those are in bank statement, but need to go in the cash book. So those blue items will usually be used to update the cash book. And then these green items will be used to do the bank rec. Well, of course, you know me. We need to answer why. We need to explain why. Okay, so let's start. Now, of course, you guys can see all the notes here. I'm not just going to read these notes word for word. I'm going to explain a little more. Well, where more is needed. Sometimes more is not needed. Right? 
Okay, so direct deposits to bank account. Okay, so you know if you have a bank account, you could take money or a check and you could go to the bank. Uh, well, of course, prior to COVID time, I mean, even now in COVID, as you can still go. And you could go to the ATM, put your card in, tap, tap, tap the screen, put your money or checks in and your money goes into your account. You could go to the teller, the person inside the bank, and you could do the same thing. You just wouldn't tap, tap, tap the teller face. That's a difference. Don't do that. Don't. Right. Now, um, <clears throat> so those, those are inflows to our account. So we're going to have to add that, add those to the cash book. Right. Um, direct credit transfers. So, of course, once again, with COVID, <laughs> a lot of us have now become a bit more familiar with online banking and internet transfers. So a lot of you all, the parents actually might have the app on their phone. Maybe you have an app on your phone for your bank account to do transfers. I, I don't know. Or maybe you prefer to use your laptop or your computer because you just prefer it and maybe it's more secure, whatever the case is. So those online transfers from one person's bank to the next, those, well, in this case, it says direct credit transfers. So that means people have been sending us money. Okay. So what do we do with that? That would also have to be added in the updated cash book as in put on the debit side. So the first and the third items are both items are going to go on the debit side. All right? Once again, if you have any questions, ask them in the, in the comment section below. I'll answer them. Now, a standing order. So remember just now we talked about a bank overdraft being a, a facility that the bank affords to its customers. So a standing order is something else the bank will do, but basically what it is, is an automatic payment that the bank makes on your behalf. So you have to fill out some forms saying, hey, I want to pay this amount to this person every month, week, three months, six months, year, etc., etc." And it's a standing order, as in it's, auto it's supposed to be done every month or whatever the case is, and the bank does it for you. So you don't have to worry about doing it yourself. Some people like to have control over their, their transfers, so they will not issue standing orders. They will execute all transactions themselves. Other people like automation and saves them time and money, so they do it. So, of course, that's a payment that's going to go on the credit side in the updated cash book. The bank charges for the month. Okay, so the bank does not look after our money for free. We have to pay them to look after it, and that's what the bank charges are. Automatic deductions that are taken from our account, debited to our account, and that go to the bank. Cool. So that will go on the debit, the credit side in the cash book. Okay. So here's, here's what I want to do. I want to do the updated cash book, and then I'm going to come back and explain those three items in green. So let's split this screen, and we're going to go down. Um, now, a major problem many students face is knowing what goes where. So what I did is um, I did a little table here. Which, of course, if you want, you could take a screenshot of, you could pause the video and write it down. Up to you, all right? <laughs> so, in our updated cash book, so we're going to start with the balance, 6,000. Now, don't just assume all balances are now overdrafts because I did one example of an overdraft. To know if it's an overdraft, the question has to be very specific. The question has to say, hey, this is an overdraft, <laughs> okay? If it doesn't, you can assume it's a regular bank balance, right? Oh, and I'm missing a zero, am I not? Okay, so 6,000. So again, the direct deposits and the direct credit transfers are increases. So we're going to put those on the debit side. Oops. Okay, so those go there. And the second and fourth items, standing order and the bank charges, those are payments. Those go on the credit side of the updated cash book. So we're going to put them here. Nice. So clearly, we could see that the debit total is greater than the credit total of 3,000. So we need a 14,000 balance to make it balance. And of course, you could put that here too. Balance brought down, 14,000. Okay, cool. Now, we are going to talk about these items here in green. Uh, but first, let's, let's just put in the opening balance in the... Bank rec, 9,000. 9,000, right? Okay. So what I want to do, I think I'm going to talk about the bank lodgements first, all right? <clears throat> okay, so remember a little while ago I was saying that when you get money, you go to the bank and you, you put it in, right? Okay, so whether you put the money in at the ATM or the teller, usually, especially with checks, five, your, your account does not actually get credited with the money for five days. 
So when you get a check, you're going to go and debit your cash book. Hey, I have money. Great. But if you don't carry that check to the bank, do you ever get the money? Not from that check. Mm -mm. So you have to carry the check to the bank. So when you carry the check to the bank now, <laughs> The money, once again, does not automatically get transferred. It takes time. So in situations like that, where you have carried a check to the bank and the money has not yet hit your account, that's called a bank lodgement. So we're going to have to add that. Similarly, well, on the positive checks, I should have explained this one first because same thing, if, somebody, if you get a check from somebody, you say, hey, I have money, but if you don't carry the check to the bank, guess what happens? The money never goes into your account. So until you carry the check to the bank and it processes, you don't see the money. When you get the check, when you get the check, you will go in your cash book and you will put a debit to show the receipt of that money, of that check. So your cash book, let's say cash book, bank statement. Your cash book will go up, but your bank statement there go nowhere because you haven't carried the check, right? So when you do your bank rec, you have to add it to the bank statement balance so that they will now be equal. Same thing with the bank lodgement. Cash book, bank statement. When you, when you get the check, you are going to put a debit in your cash book. So your cash book is going to go up. Your bank statement. Even when you carry the check to the bank and deposit it, it takes about five working days to clear or to hit your account. So in the bank rec now, what you have to do is add the bank lodgement so that you will show the effect on the account when the check actually hits. All right, so we're going to put those two things in. I'm going to hope that those are the two things I put in first. Oh, no, I didn't. All right, cool. So let's take that out. All right. Uh, once again, it doesn't matter the order in which you put these items. All right. So now let's talk about the unpresented checks. So unpresented checks are checks you have paid other people with, but they have not carried that check to their bank yet. Or maybe they did and it's lodged, just like how you have bank lodgements. Right. So, when you write a check, so once again, cash book, bank statement. When you write a check to make a payment, your cash book goes down. Until that check gets carried to their bank and it's presented to yours for payment, your bank statement balance is not going to reflect that payment. It ain't going nowhere. So when you do your bank rec, you have to subtract the unpresented checks to bring your cash book and bank statement balance in line. Let me re-explain. Cash book, bank statement. When you write a check and make a payment, your cash book is going to go down. Your bank statement will not reflect that until and unless the person to whom you gave the check carries that check to their bank, their bank communicates with your bank, and your bank transfers the money. So you're going to have this difference. And that's why we do a bank rec. So on the bank rec, we're going to subtract the unpresented checks to bring the bank statement balance in line with the cash book balance. Cool. So let's take a look at that. Right, so less unpres oh, unpresented checks. And what's going to happen when we do arithmetic? We are going to get 14,000. So that is going to match with that. So now our cash book balance and our bank statement balance, well, they're equal, equal-ish. <laughs> right. Okay, guys. Okay, so I'm going to do one more example like this just in case you didn't latch on it. But I suggest if you didn't, rewind the video, listen to the explanation, take down some notes, write down your questions, and send them to me in the comment section below. Okay? So let me just do some rejig in here of the screen. I'm going to come back momentarily. Okay, guys, last example. Now, just so you know, I will have to do other videos on bank recs because there is more, right? We have at least two more items to put in the bank reconciliation statement or even cash book that we didn't talk about here. And we also have to learn how to do the bank rec starting with the updated cash book balance. Like I said, I teach that in a whole different session because I want you all to get accustomed to the process that I, and how I teach it. And going the opposite way to me confuses people if you do it too soon. So I know some of you, including teachers, might be like, why isn't he teaching it this way? Because there's no one right way to teach it. Cool? Cool. All right. So what you are seeing on the screen here is my little cheat sheet on top, right, um, that I created for you guys. And what we're going to do, we're going to use that in conjunction with an exercise. So I'm giving you guys an extra question that normally I reserve for my class. All right. So you're getting a little extra today. So... 
This is once again a question where we have just ending balances. So let's take a read. So deck the halls, right, has a closing bank balance of 4,000. So bank balance is 4,000, right? Sorry, and that's in the cash book, right? So let's balance cash book. Uh, yellow, yellow. And the bank statement balance is 1,000. All right, so we have those two balances and they differ. So we definitely have to update the cash book or maybe just do a bank, right? Maybe it's just one and not the other. Because that could be very possible, eh? But I'm doing both. <laughs> okay, so we have direct deposits. We have a standing order, credit transfers, bank charges, unpresented checks, bank lodgements, undeposited checks. Okay, so let's start from the top. So we, could, we have direct deposits. So if you're not sure, Look in the question for words and phrases that actually help you to figure out where this item is because it's in one of two places. It's either in the cash book or in the bank statement. So you see how this says deposits to direct deposits to bank account. It means people, customers went in and they deposited money in our account without giving us the money first. So instead of coming to us and giving us a check or giving us cash, they went to our bank they went to the cashier and said, hey, I want to put money in this account. And they gave them the number. And the teller was like, okay, no problem. Cool. Here's your receipt. So what happened there is money went into our account without us knowing about it. Which means when we find out about it, we have to update the cash book. So it says here, right, up in the top, it says direct deposits, updated cash book. So we're going to put, once again, we're going to put these items in green. All right. So that's a green item. All right, next, standing orders. So um, this says standing. No, I, I put them in the same order for the sake of simplicity to be able to compare them, right? When you guys get questions, things are going to be mixed up. So you're going to need to read and understand. Yep. <laughs> it's not always going to be spelled out for you. Okay, so a standing order, once again, is an automatic payment we set up with the bank to make a payment on our behalf. So we don't have to physically execute it. The bank does it on our behalf, which means the money comes out automatically from our account. And if we don't remember it, when we get the bank statement, then we have to update the cash book. So we're gonna have to, of course, subtract that item. So that's a green item. Okay, uh, next we have credit transfers, right? So a credit transfer is like an online transfer straight to your account, so instead of somebody going to your bank and depositing cash or a check, they just send the money online. So that's gonna to have to be added or put on the debit side of the updated cash book. Cool. And bank charges is the last item. So bank charges, once again, that's a deduction from our account by the bank for looking after our money. So we're gonna to have to subtract that as well. Oops. Okay, so you know what, let's, um. Let's do the updated cash book first. So what a, what a, so clearly everything is going to be blue. Okay. So I, I'll come and re-explain. Actually, yeah, I'll wait to, I'll wait to highlight it. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> going to scroll along a little bit. All right. So I'm going to put this information back on top here. So it's same deck the halls, right? Okay, cool. So let's deal with the updated cash book first. So we have um, balance brought, yeah, balance as per cash book which is 4,000, right? So direct deposits and credit transfers will be added or put on the debit side. So direct deposits, sorry, uh, 8,000 and credit transfers, what? Cool, credit transfers 7,000. Next we have standing orders and bank charges those are payments, so those will go on the credit side. So let's put them here. So standing order, insurance, insurance, right. <laughs> okay, um, 2,000, cool, and then bank charges. Yeah, those are annoying. Okay, so clearly we could see that the debit side is gonna have a greater total than the, the debit side is gonna have a greater total than the credit side. So we put this greater total on both sides. Um, we're gonna put 16,000 here as the updated cash book balance. 
16,000. Okay, all right, cool. So we've done the updated cash book. So now, time to scroll back up and use this little cheat sheet again to help us with the bank reconciliation statement. Okay, so I mean, I think we know that everything not highlighted in green is gonna end up being highlighted in blue. So once again, unpresented checks. So those are checks, payments we have made via check. But even though we have, once again, cash book, bank statement. So we made a payment with a check, so cash book goes down because we credited it. But until our customers, or sorry, not, until the people we paid carry the check to the bank and the bank processes it, the bank statement balance ain't going nowhere. So when you do your bank record, you're gonna minus the unpresented check figure to bring your bank statement figure and cash book in line. So we're gonna put that in blue. And we're gonna know to subtract that item. Ooh. Right, now bank lodgements and undeposited checks. So, uh, so bank lodgements, that's when we get a check, we carry it to the bank, we deposit it, but it takes time. So when we get a check, our cash book is gonna go up because we're gonna debit it. We record the, the, check, the check being received. But the bank statement, until that check is carried and deposited and cleared, the bank statement balance ain't going nowhere. So in the bank rec, we have to add unpresent, sorry, bank lodgements to the bank statement balance to bring our cash book and bank statement balances in line. So that's another blue item. I'm going to add that. And then undeposited checks, basically the same, the same logic, just a slightly different stage of the process in that we actually haven't carried it to the bank yet. <laughs> um, hey, did you not highlight? Yeah, okay, cool. Right. So once again, an undeposited check is a check we have gotten. So cash book, bank statement. Cash book, if we receive a check, cash book goes up. Bank statement. Hmm, what happens there? Nothing. If we don't carry the check to our bank and deposit it, nothing is gonna to happen to the bank statement balance. Cool? Right, so in the bank rec, we're going to have to add undeposited checks to bring the cash book balance and the bank statement balance in line. So now let's pull up the information here. And we're going down here as well. So bank statement balance is 1,000. Right, so once again, we could, put, we could put them in the order of appearance, we could put them in another order, it doesn't matter. So we're gonna less unpresented checks, unpresented, yeah, sorry. Um, how much is it? 10,000, ooh, all right. Sorry, I need to put that um, thing there. And then we're going to have to add, all right, bank, Lodgements, which is 20,000, and also add on the sorry, on the posted. <laughs> Guys, I, I swear I'm not, I'm not usually so careless with my typing, but something is going on today, clearly. Okay, and when we add and subtract, um, that's going to give us 10 and 16,000. So, so let's get rid of this split and let's see, oops, no, no, let's get rid of the split, red, right? And let's see if everything ties back. So what do we have here? 16,000, 16,000, yeah? Cool. Okay. All right, so there you go. So, so that looks like a good place to stop. All right, so ladies and gents, that has been your introduction to bank reconciliation statements. You've learned some of the terminology, you've learned the basic process. Now, there is still more to come. We have to talk about NSF checks or un un dishonored checks, sorry. We have to talk about when there are errors in the cash book or the bank statement that we need to fix. And we also have to look at the ever popular starting the bank reconciliation balance, sorry, bank reconciliation statement with the updated cash book balance, which I will get to. Okay, so guys, um, so once again, thank you so much for watching my videos. Uh, it's been a while since I've made one, so I apologize if I was a little rusty, and I'm hoping the editing process goes smoothly so I can have this out to you very soon, All right? Again, guys, if you have any questions at all about the content in the video, please ask. Like I said at the start, 
this topic was not my strongest topic in Form 4, 5 or 6. And it took me the year after Form 6, when I went to UE, to learn how to do it properly from reading a textbook. So once again, and, and it goes back with what I always say, right? <coughs> if what you are doing isn't working, you need to try a different approach to it. You need to adapt because change is the only constant. All right, guys. So I know I kind of messed up the outro because I know there was stuff I normally say before, but once again, <laughs> it's been a little while. So thanks again for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I forget what I normally say. Bye. <laughs>